Okay, uh, yeah, so um, just this finished caching, but uh, just uh, this is supposed to be not zero but one because we want to have one wedge. Obviously, we cannot have our maximum values minus one. We have such an object, so yes, just make sure that this is at one, not zero, just like it was here. I just uh, noticed that in my last video that I uh, said it wrong. Okay, uh, so now let me set up what is cached out as renderables as well. So we can then start moving on to our um, building asset generation. And then that one is gonna be very long. And then we're gonna go into the fracture workflow and so on and so forth. Okay, um, so this is the environment secondary. So I have two elements here, which we made in here, right? Now this was the RBD, which we are loading in land animated and RBD so let's do the secondaries and then the, uh, the the forest will go here as well so in my secondaries are made out of two object level nodes right it's the volumes I think I'm gonna call these renders so I can create land animated renders land RBD render um, RBD land animate render rbd render i think it would be better if we keep the change changing names at the beginning and then rest to be um fixed variables it would be easier for filtering i think so it would be in this case this would be oops, rbd land render so if I use asterisk for land render, land render, I can just get all of these in, even in this case here, it will be volumes land render. I'm putting it in capital. And it's going to be then um, dust land render. These are the particles, right? And ideally, then it's going to be which we haven't done yet but we're gonna split it later on instances debris land render okay so volumes let's drop in a file node uh, most likely file merge actually for now it's going to be only one because we only wish one but that's an easy fix uh, so where are they coming from we cached it out here so in this case, weight source is my wedge value. So I'm gonna get the, uh, so I'm middle clicking here to resolve. I'm gonna get the, uh, actually I think it is like this so it stays within the um, relative paths. So this is the volumes on me. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off as well, because this one is here, right? Volumes. So let's paste the path here. Uh, obviously dollar os needs to be exactly same as this guy that means the file name needs to match and now instead of at wet source we're gonna put again our dollar sign slice okay and now it loaded but there's only one oops so I cannot load number two because there's only one so wh what happens is usually it's gonna error out if it cannot find the second or the first or the second one. So I just set that to no, no geometry. It's gonna just find what it can find. It's gonna load what it can load, what, what it can find. Uh, so we have the, the volumes here, good. Now we can put a little visualizer just so it's a bit more, you know, it's a bit more uh, easy to see. I guess we can put density up here, another density here maybe this is too much just give it a little shade okay and we can increase the density if needed maybe it's still too dark it's just so it's not just purely white there's still no lighting here but all right so we have some volumes here now obviously not very high res fairly quick simulations but um we can crank up the resolution if needed. 
let's see the uh yeah it's only 50 million voxels it's very very low res um well it's it's low res it's fine res for a, an angle like this but it's not so much of a high resolution for a camera like this so this is going to be dependent on what we're making but this is the workflow regardless uh so this is the volumes let's turn this off let's bring in the dust so that's cached out as well and its result is this well secondary debris thing let's get that path the files up here file merge sorry and we're gonna get the same name again so this way we can you know keep using the um we don't have to put random names for file names so this way we can automate things a bit more efficiently okay so we have some of our particles as well um, I remember that we were uh, going to split this to debris um, ID steam debris steam debris initial was it the particle size or the mass so let's uh, these are still yeah remember these were VDBs right so we need to VDB points VDB points convert so I guess we could do the VDB convert points was it no yes this one extract those information out extract points so and then we're gonna use I think the mass here so basically we need to split these into two objects so um, I guess we can use a wrangle here I can say there's like a, this grouping object right uh, we can say point group on threshold so if the mass is two debris let's say right if the mass is bigger than one if the mass is bigger than one then you are a rock not a sand so the stuff that is scattered on top so they're still dynamic but they're heavier they're not dust so then we can do something like this uh, split here and we can say null dust or sand sand render debris goes here let's select the group we just created to debris okay um steam debris 24,000 studios initial oh uh, actually well I guess we didn't have to let's just try that one to see if it does the same thing steam debris yeah uh, invert selection no I think the the mass thing is slightly more smarter all right so this is what we're going to uh, render in this network and we're gonna object merge our debris points into here later to be debris uh, to be instance with another object so these are our rocks so these are our um sorry my bad this is our oh, okay so we need to invert this I made a mistake invert selection this is our sand that we're going to render this is our debris that we're going to instance so if I go here this is our sand these are rocks okay cool let's leave it like this and then finally we have the volumes okay so basically what I'll do next would be um, probably render that overnight um, but it would be to 
put this wedge count to how many chunks we had one two three four five yeah put that back to five i think is it one two three four five and i simulate uh, all the other uh, uh, here as well right i simulate all this so you have the full set all right cool um so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to save the scene as it is actually we could probably do a, a, a flip book then finish it up that way uh, before maybe doing that we can also do something like uh, a control switch to create a little um test zone right like a test switch so we can do like okay let's do that let's put a, a null there's a controller object also but now here now let's call this um test switch okay gearbox edit rendering parameters we can do it okay now nah, it's just this one so i don't want to confuse anybody with any of these so i'm going to hide these invisible okay so it's just like that now empty so what i need is to be able to render everything with a toggle and then if the toggle is on i want to be able to travel between the um the wedges so this is like select wedge cal like select wedge apply activate testing initiate take off okay except all right so this so how do we make that work so that needs to basically kick out geometry if it needs so we can do something like this so this is my okay i'm reading this from out rbd right so i'm going to do this here so let's do something like this let's cut this um, no let's not cut this because i think we are referencing this here and there so let's copy this let's paste it in here okay see i was referencing this somewhere start frame let's plug that back in to rom here to there Okay, and now what I want is let's load. Okay, what if I, because I can do this in a few ways, I can load everything as a um, packed object it, with my file merges, and then I can blast away my value. So I can do something like this, right? I can do a blast. I can say keep wedge. Then I can go here, I can go to my control object, select wedge, copy. Okay, these are all little tricks about how to speed up your workflow. It just takes a little to test it out, but once it's done, it should be fairly fast. So now so I'm keeping on the one, but this obviously needs to be packed edit. To Fujio. So now I have, oh, I just need to unpack it actually, I think. It's that one is just changing the visibility because this should be okay now like this. I have access to the points, all good. And now I can dictate on which wedge I want to load as well. So if I go here, oh, we need to do that uh, disappear unchosen geometry trick. So was it in here? No. We did that in the uh, optimization for the land. Yeah, we did that here. Isolate wedges. Let's copy this. Let's go in here. I think it should do. Yes. Okay. 
Well, we use the same thing basically. Check what's coming in from next and then just ditch everything else. So it's like so much lighter geometry now to uh, test. And then we can just go, if I want one, so you see it's loading the other one, two, fairly fast as well. And if I, so then I just need to basically, this needs to be on with a switch, we can do that. So we can say something like this. This, uh, this loads everything. Okay, then we can put a switch here. Zero is zero is turned off. Activate testing. Oh no, yes, the zero is turned off. Off means it's going to be zero. again so that kind of guy okay i want to test it won't work why uh because i paste the wrong thing so right click on the uh the the button go here let's paste this this is not that easy to reach number okay cool so now it should be okay so i want to test i i want to render i leave this on i want to test i turn this on and i can switch between the edges based on the camera, look there. So basically it's, this is usually I use for just to make sure that the displacement is working, the motion blur is working, you know, my render passes are working because I don't want to load in 50 million polygons to evaluate. If things are working, I want to work fast. I want to be an efficient artist. So I spent one hour extra at the end of the day, or I think, how am I going to do this? And this is how I work. So, um, so if I need, so, so end of the day when I need to when when the deadlines are closing in, I can I don't have to worry about these things and I can work as fast as I can, um, while knowing that it's uh, it's solid. There will be challenges, of course. Uh, the the production will be pushing for uh, you know faster iterations. Sometimes you'll feel like I don't want. Okay, I kind of spent the time now to set it up with random man and I'll go with mantra. Let's say just because you know it's easier uh try not to do that mistake please it's uh, it's very important to have a solid foundation to have a, a, a smooth ride with a difficult shot especially it's uh, this is where you need to put your pressure on top uh to to drive the shots right uh, so you get listened to uh, you you need to understand that the production um it's like a little chat now we're having but production does push for deadlines obviously this is their job because otherwise we are, we are creative people as artists we want to make sure that our, our work is really pretty however that that might mean that we can just keep working until it's really really good uh, that's uh, if we keep doing that we cannot finish the movies as well so that's why there's a nice balance between these two approaches all right after that little talk let's apply the same procedure for this guy and this guy and later on to, no, this doesn't need to be because this is inheriting this anyway so it's fine okay um let's do it let's go in here so i just need this so I, we don't need to we're not doing any um transform pieces in the volume so we just need to be basically this part and let's go volumes paste so show everything or show the edges and low so this is gonna be this could be like density volume this and that so you cannot just load them in you need to load them packed like this then blast away what you don't want then unpack it and if you're going to actually unpack it probably here because you can render packed objects but you cannot manipulate them or visualize them so this is probably a better approach like this uh, let's put a null out volume okay oops oops again okay so then this is still the same thing let's put the flag here so the render flag here okay and now the dust will probably go just 
here so the everything is in the most efficient step as possible all right so this is loading in as packed again this comes here um, this has to be unpacked even if it's coming from here so unpack will happen here because these are VDB points so we need to process them right so here here time render all good all right so now it's not going to switch to somewhere else because we don't have it but if I turn this off it's going to load everything and also loaded this section which one is this packed okay, this guy this guy this one this one can be packed as well oh this one can't be packed because we are transforming it the objects are packed so this is fine all right um let's put back our testing on okay now i'm going to do a, uh, we'll do a flip book of i don't know 200 frames 250 frames and um and for the fun of it let's do something like this let's put little boxes to copy so there are little rocks copy points if you make a copy box what happened that's funky oops all right something happened houdini crashed so let me pause and reopen the scene okay i was uh, i hooked that up wrong and then it it was very upset still the, the yeah this is again so the geometry goes to the left points goes to the right of course so this because at the moment this doesn't have any um orient so it's just using the velocity to do its bidding but uh, this is not what we want we're going to change that later on so this is kind of like what it will be like when we have the rocks <coughs> of course these are the simulated rocks what we can do definitely is to have um we we can definitely have some more stuck like where we are going to have the trees to have more uh, different uh objects to so they are um like in between that are dynamic but they're transformed with the object to have a bit nicer floor you know not just some rocks dynamic rocks but because this is kind of like actually cool so it's it's gonna be nice to have some rocks falling down okay so what i'm gonna do now is do a little playlist to see how this works how this looks so let's again start let's make it a bit bigger we can see what's happening actually you know what let's do something like this let's put a light in this scene we don't have any light here at the moment let's start with a regular distant light for now i think we're going to change those to electric lights center so we can see a little bit nicer because this option here um and miscellaneous i think yeah i can scale that's gonna make this bigger easier to work with and then let's go like this and then let's rotate this guy so we say like this a little bit like that and i can probably turn on ambient occlusion actually i think you know what the um probably the spotlights works better for when, it, when it's the um when it's the viewport visualization i think spotlights work much better so i'm gonna move the camera somewhere i like let's say like this and then i can control click spotlight which is going to create the camera from the camera view and i can go back to my regular object perspective select the uh, yeah okay so it's kind of like see it's nicer we have uh, almost some shadows there as well if anything this volume is a bit now yeah we even have the shadows from the little boxes which we can change the settings you know if you need to 
Chrome. You can click on the D while your mouse is on the, so basically the D opens display options, but depends on where the mouse is. If you move the mouse to network, you get the network view display options. If you move the mouse to the viewport, hit D, you get the display options for the viewport, which you can change the resolutions and stuff from here. So. Okay, uh, let me see now, nothing is selected, so we can probably play with the density of the volume. So maybe if anything is a bit too dense, I guess. So yeah, let's see. Okay. All right, so let's do a little play blast now. Where are my particles? And my particles are here. Are they not visible or are they to be selected? Let's select them so they're a bit easier to see. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the play blast for 200 frames. Let's call this flipbook. I say play blast sometimes because that's from Maya. Uh, I used to use Maya, so I still use Maya. Okay, start, make flipbook, and I'll come back to you after it's finished. Okay, so I did, uh, I did 170 frames. Uh, I, it actually is very useful. It tells uh, what exactly we need to do creatively. But let's play first. Okay. Um, there's a few things wrong with our cache. Uh, and we can address those notes. But um, I think that will be for another subject. But I'm going to now briefly say w what parameters we should be probably changing. But we're not going to recache that because it's again creative feedback what someone might like it the other person may not so um, what I definitely don't like is that the uh, I think we should keep getting the emission uh, happening from this edge we should isolate some of these interfaces here and definitely keep emitting volume from those areas so kind of like this but pretty much everywhere uh, the dissipation is, I think, too short. It dissipates very quickly. I think it should be, it should keep its density consistent for a lot longer. So whatever is our dissipation, we should probably multiply that by 0 0.1, so it's even smaller. Um, I can see nice little details, so I don't think I'm going to change any uh, settings on the turbulence and disturbance. It's like if we had more voxel resolution i think it will come out to be much much nicer regarding the particle simulation i think we can definitely use more um, speed variation and then still like these masses some of these should much probably much fall a lot faster some not so much so which means that because we had um we had a setting i'm gonna put this on manual we had a way to actually do that which was here landed vec i think we need to play with this a lot more and it makes certainly increase the the, the vector multiplier value uh, so you do want to see like especially my eye is going there like when this chunk spe starts speeding up i would like these particles to get sucked in faster with the rest that's where my eye is going um maybe our advection multiplier is not strong enough at the moment anyway so i think it's gonna uh, we're just ignoring these uh, um, instance orientation now because we're gonna randomize those later on but i think there's a, a good potential here uh, it just needs to be worked creatively of course but um i think it's definitely going to work scale it seems to be selling uh, the speed and the the amount of detail and the objects i think that's that's pretty cool and probably it would be nice to have, you know, when we isolate these areas and how could we isolate those? It could be probably as simple as um, blasting away or painting, or we can even go a bit more simplistic. Like uh, we have the, this is the area that is this. that's still the simulation area right so we, this this needs to be still emitting a lot more so i guess we could do 
put it in here and a quick check of the surface piece actually we can do something like this this is the outer edge of our simulation zone right so this is our simulation zone so how do we determine that section if I go like this so I need to somehow isolate these areas and emit f and and group them in a way that so I can emit from those edges so now actually this is not a very simple problem because how do I do that so if I go to terrain RBD and because it's not this outer edge that I know that it's neighboring to my static area so it's a little bit more difficult than that uh, as far as I can see but I just thought about something so let me think a bit more so right it's not like I want to edit from this edge from this edge I think it's this one no it's it's even here it's this one so that's not, that's not where I want to emit from but instead I want to emit from somewhere that is already intact at the first frame right so here and if I go here so I want to emit from there so let's say okay this is actually a good example let's say you got a note like this there's no way we, we, I recently did something uh, we, did recent, we, we did something very similar to this actually recently I think it worked really good. Uh, so it's it's a topology that m end up may end up change. So I don't want to paint it over and over. So how can I detect these faces? So I know that my topology throughout the simulation is consistent. So I can do something like this. This is my simulation, right? And let's um, ideally work on the. wedged solution version so i think i'm gonna just copy this whole thing put it back in here because it's a bit more user friendly It's not working somehow. Oh, it's the uh, shoot. This is because this is connected to this, which I deleted it. Fine. Right. Okay. So let's figure out how can I get an access to this guy. Simple. Let's go to the last frame because we know that everything is at the bottom of the ocean or the earth the last frame right so let's go here let's kill this expression so we are already here right and then let's do something like this this is already packed we need to unpack this when we unpack it we probably is going to so we need another string here also unpacked but at the same geo so let's put a grid and those are supposed to be grouped as inside faces at some point as well let's hopefully we preserve some of those let's try to see if we can make sense of some of those faces okay so did we remove anything yes it did remove some stuff okay, let's go to a little easier view so this did remove some stuff so what if i did this so it yeah, kind of did um this is concrete fracture and there is a secondary fracture i think inside yeah it's not really helping mm. okay no need we can do this so let's put a um grid let's 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 put a grid right in the dead center of our canyon 
which is something like this really long in our scenario it should be the whole thing so how is how big is that it's this big right and let's make sure this guy is on where is it here not on zy yz plane no zx i forgot okay doesn't matter we can just rotate it it's 90 degrees okay and let's make it quite big as well Okay, so it probably it's better if we stay in like because we're gonna get to some point so you know try to be reasonable we know that this doesn't change to a certain degree so let's bring this down a bit more so something like this is fine I guess even further down okay um, and for testing purposes now let's make this smaller because we can wedge this as well like everything else okay so then let's scatter some points here and let's do something like this uh we can do so we know that this is one direction is z right so we can do something like this we can create a normal wrangle and we can say at n equals so you know that it's in which axis this we know this in x axis okay so we can say at n equals um one zero zero okay so one point that way um then we can just now I'm not doing so much of a uh, yes turn off the black stations Vex here we can do this with Vex as well just getting half of them randomized this is just in the seed here scatter more points and let's say this one is here this one is minus one okay merge these and let's ray these now on this frozen frame of the simulation that is at the last one ray points against the collision object okay so now they are stuck because they're using the normals that are in the object and they are shot into the space and they hit our walls but we still have points that we don't really care and how do we get rid of them on the race up you can turn on point intersection distance and you're gonna get some one with some attributes with zero so let's put a wrangle here and say if the distance is zero go away if f at dist equals zero remove point zero comma at pt num at pt num okay okay now we just have to let's let's put more points so let's get it let me get it to c okay now we kind of have more points and basically we also don't want anything that is pointing up or down as well which is actually not that problem seriously uh, maybe here a little bit not really no um, the next thing we can do is probably well we can now say at the wrangle and let's actually also call these uh, points give us give these points um, an attribute because we're going to attribute transfer twist to the moving 
we're gonna attribute transfer this to this mesh and then we're gonna attribute copy this to the moving piece so let's call this um f at inner edge inner edge okay whatever that's one then i have my gear here right then um what i can do is attribute transfer this inner edge value well honestly i think even that's not necessary can i copy this and then no this is fine yeah that this should work uh, so that's inner edge okay so if i do a color swap on the points here ramp in the edge okay that's a bit too much fall off i guess here just some inside areas how much we could even do blast later on it's fine then i can attribute copy this to the moving version which is now in the edge and if i do a color swap of the inner edge yeah this should work yeah cool so i can now use this area to emit constantly or you know based on the speed or something so it's but now we kind of like isolate that edge right and now because we know that this is like the area that's going to come up part last so we can always emit it and it's gonna i think that it's gonna probably create a bit better um flow so what i can do finally is that i can say then i can scatter points on this area only using the inner edge value because i don't care about the consistency anymore it's just going to pass into this generation and now i have points scattered along those edges that i can pass into i'm gonna cut this go into uh, manual landscape secondaries so it needs to pass into here as a source right because this is my cache it's not open because we pasted something else okay let's paste this here oh i needed to load the whole thing i made a mistake there i did rbd this is the this is trying to load in right because it's trying to load in the wedge yes let's run the wedge as well it this once so it's a uh, change land rbd i can delete this one click click it generates the value let's dive in here okay we already had this here so which means we can use the same logic here inner wedge this is the moving part so we can plug this guy here in okay and we can this is our um zero pieces no this is our frozen frame so time shift same thing here last frame 1500 Plug this here it's the same thing right yes okay let's tidy this up a little bit it's got a little convoluted okay so this one we go here oh i have two of them okay so i just copy pasted it into this location because it kind of makes more sense and then I have my in source points 
coming from the resource here I need to I guess load back a little bit so it's a bit faster um, because this was going in because we had the test area which was much faster this was going in to volume rest tries for the, the pyro simulation so now we can bring this guy in as well however there was one thing i want to make sure that we were not overdoing it therefore let's see you see this goes here like this fine this is fine um yeah we lost this so i don't want to emit all the time i could wrangle so this guy will say if length at v is less than i don't know five meters remove point maybe on pp now so it removes the points i guess um length at v at sign then um and i guess we'll see okay so it kind of like adds up itself a bit later on like slowly poof. and then i guess it slows down towards the end anyway but we can also probably yeah it kind of dies too quickly so let's do something like this let's go delete soap so now we're going a bit less procedural i think we can do something like this points root by range so that's like just that like a percentage it's all gone keyframe set keyframe and let's say if this frame is 100 that's zero so it starts dying slowly from this frame forward okay and it's gone so then now we can merge this stream with the rest of the um, source points which is calculating now don't calculate okay and finally we said we needed a bit more less station so let's go 25 Java and half all right um, now this should kind of fill in that gap so we're gonna have a lot more smoke feels will feel like it's peeling away from the edge okay a bit more density all right cool i'm gonna close this and you can recache this overnight again or you know day however whatever time it is wherever you are and um so we can continue so the next thing i want to do is save this Thank you too much this one is now part three so this is like the um the secondaries are finished so now we can really start with the the building procedural building generation in the next video so i'm going to stop this one and see you in the next chapter